Hi, this is Kate from Minute Earth. Around the turn of the 20th century, African ranchers regularly shot these cute native carnivores. The animals were known as tricolored dogs. But the angry ranchers, convinced the creatures were slaughtering livestock, started calling them simply and disdainfully wild dogs. And the name stuck. For decades, the canine's population declined, but most people weren't that concerned. After all, wild dogs sound like crazed rabies vectors. Why care about them disappearing? It turns out that names can really affect our perception of animals, in a negative way or a positive one. For example, the slime head sounds, uh, slimy. Not something you'd order for dinner. But once someone in the fishing industry cleverly renamed the fish the much more nomable orange ruffy, consumers started gobbling it up. Actually, almost to extinction. This is marketing, plain and simple. Like how rechristening prunes as dried plums made the fruits seem more hip. And how tobacco company Philip Morse rebranded itself as the incredibly generic Altria, so the public would forget its troubled reputation. And for an animal, the right name can make us want to save it. Studies have shown that when people are given only species names, for example, the Patriot Falcon and the Sheep-Eating Eagle, people are much more interested in conserving the species whose names sound positive. If the hairy-nosed otter were called the furry-nosed otter, we'd apparently be more willing to spend resources to protect it. It's a small change, but fur is, I don't know, maybe cuter? But does renaming species work as a conservation tool in the real world? Well, a rare subspecies of Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins was renamed the Hong Kong Pink Dolphin to inspire locals' sense of pride and to capitalize on the animal's weird, but cutesy, color. The species quickly garnered public interest. It was even chosen as a Hong Kong mascot, and extra conservation funding rolled in. And that African wild dog that ranchers were killing? Conservation groups in Zimbabwe have started to call it the painted dog, which seems far less shootable. And it's helping the population there rebound. It's worth noting that the populations of both the Hong Kong pink dolphin and the painted dog remain perilously low. It's obviously going to take more than just marketing to save them. It's also worth noting that the tricolored, I mean, wild, uh, painted dog isn't even technically a dog. The two lineages split more than six million years ago. So maybe yet another name change is in order. And since the internet is pretty awesome at renaming species, feel free to leave us your idea in the comments. If you want to learn more about kittas and doggos and hot moose and floaty potatoes and saber-toothed jungle tubas, then you'll want to check out Curiosity Stream, which sponsored this video. They have over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction series from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals about all sorts of awesome science stuff, like our friend Derek's great new show about alphabetical pellets. You can get unlimited streaming access starting at just $2.99 a month. And for Minute Earth fans, the first 30 days are completely free when you sign up at curiositystream.com minute and use the promo code MINUTE. Thanks, CuriosityStream.